I love holiday season and here I have 10 of the best DIY Christmas ornaments. Hi and welcome, I'm Sarah and in today's video I'm going to share with you some air dry clay Christmas decorations. Many of them are fairly easy and suitable for beginners. Here on my channel I aim to provide you with some creative inspiration so I hope you enjoy. Please use this inspiration to make your own Christmas home decor and maybe even make some little gifts for Christmas. So please do get yourself some air dry clay and relax and enjoy some creative time. So here are my 10 Christmas projects. I was asked if I could embellish a shop bought Christmas bauble and this is the first of two for this video. An easy one for beginners. Take a square or circle of paper and make a template. You can fold it in half and half again or in thirds like I do here. Making sure I don't cut through the centre of the paper, which is the point, I'm going to cut a petal shape. This here is the middle of the paper and we're basically cutting a large flower shape that is just a bit bigger than the circumference of your bauble. Using a template allows you to do your design over and over again really quickly. I've rolled out some air dry clay to a few millimetres in thickness, then if you cut your template out of card, you can roll this and indent this into the clay and then it's really easy to cut out your shape with a knife. Take a straw or a pencil and make a hole in the centre of the air dry clay. Take the plastic bauble of your choice, I really don't recommend you use glass ones for this. Remove the hanger and then gently place your air dry clay on the top like this. Mould it and shape it around the sphere with your hands. It's a good idea to dip your finger in some water and then smooth out the clay. Mine's attached really well to the bauble, but if you want, you can add some white glue underneath the clay. Taking the attachment hanger and pushing this back into place. Feel free to make a second one of these and add the clay to the underside of the bauble. This is when you would add some white glue. My son was watching me make these and so here he is getting stuck in making his own. It's wonderful to get children involved, they really do love the air dry clay. You can most definitely leave it like this, or like me, you can add some detail. Take a toothpick or the end of a pencil, or like me, I have the end of a paper clip here, adding in some dots for details, and then with my knife, adding in some more detail. If you have some lace, you could try indenting it with that pattern and that would look really pretty. Prop them up like this and then leave them to dry. They should take about 48 hours to dry. These are now completely dry and you could paint them with acrylic paints or as you wish and add some pretty bows. I've tied the ribbon and will add this bow with some hot glue. I think these are a really cute Christmas air dry clay project and I hope you'll make some. Completely unique and you can personalise them as well if you wanted to. For this next one, I cut some more Christmas templates out of some card, rolling the clay and cutting the shapes out with a knife as before, making them all smooth with a bit of water. Christmas cookie cutters are also widely available. From the air dry clay, cut out and dry any shapes you wish. And then here I have some Christmassy paper napkins. I often get asked for alternatives for painting air dry clay once it is dry and this is a really great alternative. So you just need some white glue or Mod Podge and these paper napkins. The air dry clay pieces are fully dry and I take a paintbrush and add just a thin coat of the white glue, getting every bit of the surface and going all the way to the edges. I'm taking off the top layer of the paper napkin and I can lay this down onto the glue. So if painting the clay is not your speciality, here we have a really quick and easy way to decorate our air dry clay. Gently adding another layer of the glue or Mod Podge over the top. Then I set this aside to dry completely overnight. If you want to make your design symmetrical or lay down a specific part, fold the paper in half, line it up and then unfold it and there you have your perfectly positioned design. This one really is another easy and simple air dry clay project for beginners to enjoy and for children too. These napkins have metallic hearts on them and they'll look great, so see what you can find in your cupboards. Once fully dry, I take some small sharp scissors and cut around the edges. I flip these over and repeat the process on the other side, but you can leave them one-sided if you wish. 
I pressed all the edges down with my fingers and given them another coat of Mod Podge. And in my craft box I have these metallic markers. With these I'm adding some detail to the edge but you can of course miss this step. These would definitely make a really lovely holiday season gift or a fun craft to have a get together with some friends. For this next Christmas ornament I've cut out a piece of air dry clay in a short ribbon shape like this. And here I have some craft wire, you can use any thickness you have or can get hold of. Mine is fairly thin so I've doubled it over and twisted it together like this. Then use something cylindrical to bend the wire around. The idea here is to make a small wreath shape that our little piece of air dry clay will fit across and I have a little loop that I formed at the top. The idea is that we can decorate this mini wreath in whatever we have and write a little message of our choice onto the air dry clay. I just like to draw this in pencil first then I'm going in with a marker pen. You could personalise these with people's names and add them to the gift, they will look gorgeous. Take some dried twigs or some dried flowers or anything of your choice and then I use a little bit of hot glue to attach these together onto the wire and absolutely beautiful, I absolutely love this one. I feel like I need to say, warning, this air dry clay Christmas ornament is super cute. I have a wadge of clay which is probably half an inch or more in thickness and then using a knife my son and I are cutting out some really simple shapes, some little house shapes. Just easily like this, they don't have to be perfect, then we can use our fingers and smooth them out. Again a little bit of water on our fingers makes this that little bit easier. I want mine to be hanging so I add a little hole with a pencil just central at the top. Feel free to make them bigger, smaller or add any details while the clay is still wet. Then once they're fully dry like they are now you can add some paint. This is one of my favourite parts. I use some acrylic paint, a really fine brush and add some really little details. I absolutely love it. But if painting isn't your strong point, maybe just keep it really really simple. When it comes to the tiny detail, I know it helps to have a steady hand, but if you're a beginner, practice, practice, practice. With all of my air dry clay pieces, I make sure I give them a good varnish, and there are lots of options for this, as you can see in one of my previous videos. Once they're dry, I screw in these little eye hooks with a little bit of glue and then string them together and the, I absolutely love these, they're so cute and I can imagine so many of these all over the Christmas tree, they'd be really really pretty, so I do hope you give these a go. When I was little my grandma had two of these on her Christmas tree and I absolutely loved them and so I still have this on my Christmas tree today. But I thought, why don't we challenge ourselves and see if we can make one of these out of air dry clay. So you can start with a bauble. So this is my second bauble design but has a little bit more detail to it. Although mine effectively is actually a ping pong ball. I've added some wire around the ball and up into the neck and then adding some tin foil over the top of this, squeezing it in place until I'm happy with the shape. Then I take my air dry clay. You can roll it out with a rolling pin if you wish, but I like to pinch it between my fingers to a few millimetres in thickness and then cover the whole of the tin foil in this way. This design is a little bit more advanced than the ones I've shown you so far in this video, but it's good to challenge ourselves and I like to show you something that little bit different with my air dry clay. Fresh out of the packet, the air dry clay is really smooth and soft and we can use this to our advantage when sculpting on an item like this. So I just use my fingers and really press and work all that clay together so that it all becomes one again. If you don't like to use your fingers, you can use something like this, like the back of your paintbrush or another sculpting tool. And it's really starting to take shape. Once the swan is dry, I'm going to add some feathers in, so at this stage I can add a little hole so that it's ready to add those at the end. While the clay is still wet, you can add in some detail, and I'm adding these in so I know where the wings are going to be. 
This time I'm going to be covering the air dry clay with some glitter so I don't need to smooth it out really perfectly as I'm hoping the glitter is going to cover some of those little imperfections. So glitter could be the way forward if we don't like to smooth out that clay. Let's see. My swan is fully dry and I love how it's looking so far. If you want yours to be hanging I'd recommend making a hole and gluing in a little hanger at this stage. Here I have some white craft glue and I'm using my brush and very gently brushing this on to the places I want my glitter to stay. This way you can add different colours at different times. Make sure you have something underneath to catch the glitter and we can sprinkle our glitter over the glue and it will attach and then we can scoop that glitter all back up and put it in the pot and reuse it again. At this stage it would have been easier to have this hanging but I've added with a little bit of hot glue a little clip on the bottom and this is going to be a clip on tree decoration. I've added the glue and the glitter in stages and let it dry in between then I sprayed with a bit of spray varnish. Once I've left that dry I'm now going in with my varnish to let the glitter set so it's not shedding all over the place. To finish it off I added some glue and then the feathers. What do you think? A little bit different and it certainly doesn't look like it's made out of air dry clay to me. I hope it's something that might inspire you and you do something similar. Let's make a Christmas trinket dish. I've rolled out the clay to a third or a quarter of an inch in thickness and I'm cutting it out. You can use a knife to cut any shape out you wish. And then I'm rolling out a fairly thick coil of air dry clay that will go all around the perimeter of my shape. This is going to be the lip of the dish and so I score all around the edge and all around one side of the coil and we're going to blend these two sides together. This of course isn't going to be a food dish, this is a little trinket dish or something to use and decorate your home with at Christmas as unfortunately air dry clay is not food safe. I've neatly aligned the coil all around the edge of the dish. You can use some slip in between the two pieces but on this occasion I'm going to be blending those two edges in really well and smoothing them really well to make one that I don't think it's necessary just at the moment. We don't need any fancy tools, I'm blending them together with the end of my paintbrush and our hands are our best tools so use your hands and smooth everything out all lovely. Take your time over this part of the process and really enjoy smoothing and forming that clay. Leave it to dry completely and this could take a few days as it is fairly thick. Once completely dry you can take a piece of fine sandpaper and lightly sand down the air dry clay if you wish. Just make sure you wear a mask or do this outside and get rid of all those little bits before we paint. And for this I'm using some acrylic paints. Just make sure you let everything dry in between each coat of paint and that you do the underside and everywhere as well. One of my absolute passions is illustration and I love to draw and doodle and so I'm going to add a cute little design onto this dish and I show you how. I sketched out my design on a piece of paper but you could print something out off the internet. Then I add some graphite and pencil onto the back of the piece of paper put this in place and then if you go over with a sharp pencil or a pen then the detail will transfer onto the dish behind. A technique I did so often as a kid. The old tips and tricks are always the best ones. You could do absolutely any design or a quote of your choice in this way, just print something out and then trace over it. With my illustrations I normally go in with my pen and ink first and then I go in with watercolour afterwards but here I'm using my acrylic paints to fill out the body of the colour and just painting that in all lovely and delicately with my paintbrush. So here I have my little ice skating Christmas mouse. It's super cute and I can't wait to see how this finishes up on this little dish. If you feel you do need to improve your painting skills and your sketching skills, as I said earlier, I do feel it's practice, practice, practice. That's all I did as a kid and then gradually I just could see things improving and got better. 
If I could paint and illustrate all day long, I really would. I just love to make things with my hands and I love to inspire you along the way. Once I've gone in with most of the colour, I'm just taking a fine paintbrush and painting around the edge in my black and then adding some more details and a little bit of snow in there too. Just make sure you seal everything with some varnish like I do with all of my projects and this one is super cute. I absolutely love it. What do you think? Please do comment about all of these in the comments below. Here we have another air dry clay ornament, easily cut out using our knife once again. I'm going to be adding some tassels and ribbons to these so I take a little stick and make some holes in the air dry clay. Once fully dry like this one you can sand and smooth them with some sandpaper and then I get my acrylic paint and I'm painting them with my acrylic paints. And then paint any design on them you wish, going really simple and basic if you wish to. Here I have a really dark navy blue so I've just added blue and a little bit of black and I think this makes a really lovely Christmas colour with that white and I'm going to add a little pop of red at the end. With my fine paintbrush and some white acrylic paint I'm adding in some little trees to add some detail. Then I'm painting that whole bar at the bottom, I paint all of that white, otherwise if you don't paint it white and then you varnish it, the varnish tends to discolour that air dry clay. Adding in some snow detail and the moon, these are looking so cute. And then we're ready to take some embroidery threads like I have here or some ribbons and we can embellish them with some beads and anything you wish and make them really cute to hang up at Christmas. I've looped over some threads and I'm pulling them through those little holes. It is a little bit fiddly, I won't lie. And then I can trim them off and then I add a little bit of glue on the backs just to make sure I hold all of that in place. You can paint the back as well or as I did here, I didn't feel I needed to. Finished off with some really glossy varnish. These look absolutely amazing. I love them, I really, really do. Let's use a bit more of that clay for some more air dry clay Christmas cuteness. Here I've rolled a fairly thick log of clay and I'm cutting off a section. All of these don't have to have any specific dimensions. You work with whatever size and style you wish. All of mine will turn out completely different sizes and I am perfectly happy with that. If you are particular then just add the dimensions, jot them down as you go and then do the next one exactly the same. These are going to be little fairy houses so I've drawn one side up into a point and then I'm making a hole all the way through as these are going to be hanging up. They're going to be little ornaments for our tree. If the hole through the centre is not too thin it makes our life easier and I also like to make that hole so that there's not a big thick wadge of clay and it dries more evenly. I'm rolling a thinner coil of clay to cut some little pieces into the same size so that I can add some detail to our little fairy roof. The main bodies of the little fairy houses are now completely dry. I roll this fresh clay into little teardrop shapes and flatten them slightly. These are going to be the little roof tiles. I make five or six of these all the same and if you want to smooth them out again just add a little bit of water on your finger and smooth them all nice and neatly so we don't have any cracks. As this air dry clay is fully dry we can add a little bit of water onto it and then I'm going to smooth on and blend on these little tiles of fresh air dry clay. Then add more of them until you get all the way round. Just pinch them, blend them on and smooth them in this way. As you go around just work out how many you might need all the way around, either five or six or more, it's up to you. And this is how it looks with one layer all the way around. And then I'm going to repeat that again and make them ever so slightly smaller this time and overlap them over the center point uh, like this and make them go all the way around and smooth and blend them in the same way. 
I really love making these and I love to feel the clay and to sculpt in this way but if you find this is a little bit fiddly then you can leave this part out and you can by all means paint that detail on instead. All these projects are here to just relax and enjoy a bit of craft time. I'm repeating exactly the same process for all of the others, not minding if they're all that little bit different. Once fully dry I paint them just like we painted the little houses at the beginning, in any kind of detail you wish, keeping them as simple or as complicated as you wish. If there are other ornaments that you've seen that you like and you like to recreate, hopefully this video gives you a bit of inspiration to show you that many things are possible and if we just find a way of doing these things and work out well, how we're going to go through the project and carry it out, most things are possible and we can recreate a lot of those little ceramic designs for ourselves and for our homes or as little gifts. If you enjoy my videos, please do subscribe if you haven't done already. Please do comment lots below. I love it and I will try and reply to as many as possible. And there is that thanks button underneath here if you would like to show your appreciation even further. It is always much appreciated and helps me continue with these videos. Add ribbons and beads and then they're ready to decorate your home or pop on your Christmas tree. I love them and I hope you give them a go too. These would make some lovely little fairy decorations for all year round as well. You could paint them in any colours, so not just for Christmas. It's so satisfying when we open up a fresh block of clay and it's all lovely and soft and smooth. I've rolled out the air dry clay to about a quarter of an inch in thickness. I've chosen a Christmas cookie cutter and I'm cutting out roughly around the edges. On this Christmas decoration I'm going to do a nice knitted effect and so for this we need some strands of the clay and we're going to roll these out into some nice thin coils. I'm adding some craft glue on top of the not yet dried air dry clay. Not my usual technique but it works for this project. Once we have our thin coils we can either double them over or put two together and roll them in one direction so that they twist together like this. Make plenty of twists with the air dry clay like this and then once you have a few you need to twist some more in the opposite direction. Do you see how these they actually go in the other direction and that together makes our little knit pattern. Then one by one we can add these on top of our glued air dry clay and just cut them off loosely as we go and as long as you go to the edges of this clay we'll be able to cut out with our cutter in a moment. Alternate the twist direction as you see here and then we very easily cut it out with our cookie cutter. We can add a hole in the top and then set it and leave it to dry. You can make the coils a lot thinner and make the twists even finer to make a more detailed piece and do them in absolutely any shape you wish. Do you have any of these little battery operated tea lights? Well I've got quite a few of them in my craft box and so I've cut myself a little template of a little Rudolph here and I'm going to cut this out with the air dry clay and then place this on our tea light and I'll show you how just now. Mark where the little light will be and then with the end of my paintbrush I'm making a hole. And so this is a really cute idea for a little light up Christmas decoration which would be a lovely gift alongside a card for anyone that you know I'm sure. Smooth and mould the clay as we always do. You can use a little paintbrush to get into all the details if you need. And don't forget to add a little hole for this to be hanging up on our little Christmas tree. Add in some more details at this stage too. And I've bent some wire in some little antlers and inserted these into the top. Once fully dry, if the clay does come unstuck from the little tea light, you can put a little bit of glue under there to keep it in place. And then I have painted it with acrylic paints, adding a little bit of glue onto the nose there, then dusting over a little bit of glitter. Make sure you varnish all of these pieces so that it keeps them for Christmases to come. 
I really do hope you've enjoyed all of these Christmas projects and you'll give some of them a go. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next creative video.